Is it just me, or does it seem like the AFC South can't be broken down until actual play starts on the field? Because it, that's what it seems like. Let's discuss. What's going on guys, Dick Support here, back to another video. Today we're talking about the AFC South, and let me explain what I mean. The AFC South, I feel like, is a division where any of the four teams could actually win it, and any of the four teams could come in last place. And the issue is, we can discuss how it could happen, but we're not going to know until a play starts on the field. And there are topics of conversation that I did come up with, but I feel like they're not as interesting as what I came up with with other teams and what I'm going to come up with with the rest of the divisions. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just me. I don't know, but it seems like this division is just there right now, and it's just going to get more exciting once play starts on the field. And I understand, you can't tell what's going to happen until the regular season starts. However, it seems like more than ever, this division exemplifies that. I don't know. Again, maybe it's just me. But let's talk about Houston. Okay, the surprise team from last year, the Houston Texans. Wow. Wow. I'm still in disbelief as to what they did. First of all, they had a terrific first round. Getting C.J. Stroud the second overall pick and then making the bold move to go up and get Will Anderson Jr. And now they have somebody across from him in Daniil Hunter. Daniil Hunter is one of the top sack guys in the NFL right now. And teaming him with Will Anderson, oh my god. Goodness, quarterbacks are going to be running in fear. And C.J. Stroud, he had one of the top three rookie seasons by a quarterback that we have ever seen. I think the only guys that I could put above him are Cam Newton and Dan Marino. And I think that's it. I mean, what Houston did going from just one of the worst teams in the NFL to a division winner that won a playoff game and that gave Baltimore a good run for their money in the first half of that game, and now you get Daniil Hunter, and more specifically, Stephon Diggs to go along with that receiving core that's already very good, and Stephon Diggs just makes it even better. Houston, they're going to have big expectations this year. Should we consider it Super Bowl bust? Absolutely not. I don't think they're there yet. I think the AFC is too stacked. However, five years down the road, we could see them host holding the Lombardi Trophy. Sorry, I stuttered my words there. But yeah, this team just has a lot of upside. This team, oh my goodness, from what we saw when they traded away Deshaun Watson, we thought it was going to be years before we ever saw them even compete for a playoff spot. And they're able to turn it around that quickly. I mean, just wow. Indianapolis is a very interesting team going into this season. Maybe the most interesting team going into this season. Let me explain why. Michael Pittman just signed a contract extension. You're hoping Jonathan Taylor is fully healthy and ready to go. And if that happens, watch out, defenses. They drafted Latu in the first round, took the first defensive player off the board to go along with the Forrest Buckner. Now, it's a shame they didn't get Legereus Sneed, but this defense is still very good. And now Anthony Richardson is back, fully healthy after suffering that shoulder injury early last year. What can we expect from him? I am not sure. This guy is like a create Madden player. I mean, you look at what he is physically and the talent that he has. The sky's the limit for him. And if Indianapolis can develop him and if he can respond to it, they could be very, very good this year. And that offensive line is still very good. And right now, with Indianapolis, again, we're not going to know what they are until play actually starts, but it's kind of fun to speculate what they could do. I definitely would expect them to compete for a playoff spot. They did that last year. Definitely could expect them to compete for the division, maybe even win the division. How far can this team go this year? I'm not sure. How far could they go down the line? Probably as high as Houston can if everything develops properly. And again, this is just what I'm talking about. I can't really break down what I would expect from this team because there's just so many moving pieces to it. If everybody can stay healthy, and I know that's for every single team, but really, 
for Houston and Indianapolis, they have a lot of young guys, and if they can perform even three quarters of what they think they can be, I mean, they are going to be very good teams. Jacksonville, what the heck happened last year? At one point, you had the number one seed, and I think you had a 99% chance to win the division, and you didn't even get to the playoffs. Just, how is that even possible? It's the exact opposite of what happened the year before, where it looked like you weren't even going to sniff the postseason, and you ended up winning the division. Again, how is that even possible? I'm still trying to understand this, even though I don't want to understand it, I'm still trying to. And right now, you're a team that's kind of in a loop right now. Now, Trevor Lawrence got a contract extension, and I know some people think he's already reached his peak. I don't think so. He's still a young guy. I think we haven't seen him at his best yet. And no, Trevor Lawrence is not a bust. I do not want to see anybody put the bust label on Trevor Lawrence again. He is not a bust. A bust is somebody that has never had success in the NFL. He has had success in the NFL. That's why he got the contract extension. Rant over. They lost Calvin Ridley, but they got Gabe Davis in free agency and drafted Brian Thomas. So I think they're going to be fine there, especially with Christian Kirk coming back. They did lose Rayshon Jenkins, but they got Darnell Savage. Savage might not be as productive as Jenkins was, but that could work out. They got Eric Armstead after he was cut by San Francisco, which I like. I like Eric Armstead. I think he's going to fit well on that defense. And Josh Allen got a contract extension as well. And he absolutely earned it after the season he had. I mean, he was basically the best player on Jacksonville last year. But right now, it's just, what exactly can we expect from this Jaguars team? Because the last two seasons, they have been the definition of a roller coaster team. 2022, they started off horrible. And then they get hot, win the division. 2023, they start off, they might have been the best team in the AFC at one point, and then just fell off the edge of a cliff. So right now, what's going to happen with this team, especially with Houston and Indianapolis seemingly being ahead of them, and both of them expecting to compete for this division? I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen there. Could Doug Peterson be on the hot seat? I don't know. I really have no idea what to expect from this Jaguars team. And again, as I was talking about with the Texans and the Colts, I'm not going to know anything about the Jaguars until the season starts. I can't even get a hint of what they could be in 2024 right now. I feel like if there's one team everybody can say from the AFC South, we know, or... I feel like if there's one team from this division that most people would say we have an idea of what they might look like, it's going to be Tennessee. I think a lot of people, maybe everyone, has them as the worst team in the division this year. Probably going to finish in last place. But maybe not. This is what I mean. The issue is, yes, they lost Derrick Henry to the Ravens. Yes, their rebuild is continuing. Yes, we're not sure who's going to be the future of this team and who's just a stopgap. But there's still some talent on this team. DeAndre Hopkins is here. They got Legereus Sneed from the trade with Kansas City. And they did sign some pretty good players. I mean, they got Calvin Ridley. They got Jadobia Rousier. And a few others that could fit in nicely with them. Not necessarily everything has to go right. But if most things go their way, they could surprise some people. Now, I'm not saying they're going to pull a Houston and win the division. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm not even trying to say they could make the playoffs. I'm saying they could surprise some people or surprise a lot of people and play good football. I don't know. Will Levis is going into his first full season as starter, and he's a talented player. We know he's a talented quarterback. I mean, there's a reason why people had him as a first-round pick at one point in the 2023 NFL Draft, but he fell to the second. I felt like that was the right spot for him. Others thought he should have been picked in the first round. And another team where we're not sure how this is going to go until the season starts. And for Tennessee, you know, if they get the seven wins, it actually wouldn't surprise me one bit. I don't know if they really are one of the worst teams in the NFL because I feel like there is talent on this team. And if they can play well together... 
I mean, they could shock some teams that have a big dreams in 2024. All right, guys, those were my thoughts on the AFC South. Sorry it's kind of boring, but like I said, I'm not entirely sure what to make of this division until the season starts. Next up is going to be the NFC South, and I'm going to have a lot to say about one particular team. One team, and I think you all know what it is. You better watch out, Falcons, because I'm coming for you.